I don't know how you're still doing it, mate. <laughs> I'm here. I'm conscious. <laughs> I don't know how you're still doing it. Um, but I know that what you have done this weekend is uh, you've had a pretty successful journalistic career today, but I think that what you've done this weekend is incredibly significant. You have got to work with and alongside some of the best people in the world in terms of not only advocacy for Julian, but advocacy for truth and justice. And I am, as your friend, I'm very, very happy for you. As your colleague, I'm, I'm very, very proud of you and proud to work with you. But as your friend, I'm, I'm very happy for you because I know that despite the physical exhaustion, you must be very pleased to that we've had this massive outpouring of support from everybody and that everybody has come together. We've really achieved the initial aim this weekend of bringing together this diverse group of people and, and we have um, succeeded in building a foundation to move forward from here. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I, I'm very, very, very um, inspired by everyone that I've been able to speak to this weekend. And I think that what's really, really so wonderful is it is that it shows the integrity of people from all different backgrounds, that it doesn't matter, you know, what side of, of what issue you're on. There are people with integrity on all sides of every issue. And so when you have an issue like Julian Assange and WikiLeaks and, and supporting them, uh, it just draws magnetically the, the the most wonderful people together, and so it's been a real a real privilege to uh, witness all of these wonderful people uh, speaking out on behalf of Julian Assange and in behalf of on behalf of reconnecting him with the world, and hopefully you know as soon as possible also seeing him freed in a real way. And so I, I appreciate absolutely everyone who uh, spent the time, took the time out of their extremely busy schedules in order to support this effort. And I think also that the, the censorship and the attacks that we've seen on the website and the doxing we've seen of some of the panelists, um, you know, does not at all dampen our efforts. It only encourage us, encourages us to fight harder for Julian and it lets us know that we're being effective. So I think that we can take that as, actually as an encouragement and not be daunted at all whatsoever uh, by that those types of attempts to strangle this message that's been unsuccessful and it will continue to be unsuccessful as we continue. Um, I noticed that the censorship is not sustainable and that was something that was very interesting to me. They were able to keep it up until we were able to provide evidence of it as soon as we actually had hard proof from the metrics, then mysteriously the shadow bands lifted and all of a sudden I had, you know, 500 notifications an hour again instead of 10 <laughs> or whatever it was before that. Um, and that, that was an interesting object lesson for me to see that as soon as you bring the censorship to light, as soon as you can evidence the censorship and people can recognize it's occurring, that the censors are forced to pull the plug on the censorship lest they be exposed at a massive scale for it um, so that that was very fascinating um, and in terms of recent events that appear to have occurred while I was sleeping I I wouldn't actually we'll go back to Vivian's um, Christ parable uh, where was Christ ultimately attacked from he was attacked from um, not from externally or from without but from within from within his own sphere his own circles and so i am not surprised in the slightest that when we are sitting here advocating for the freedom of the number one target of the cia the most powerful intelligence agency in the world that 36 hours later or 20 no i guess not only 24 hours it took me 24 hours 24 hours later this internal in terms of the activism sphere this internal these internal attacks are manifesting on us when what we are in fact doing is advocating for a target of the deep state um so i think that that says that that really speaks for itself um and i think just as the censors expose themselves with the censorship i think that any forces internally within activism that are um, targeting those trying to emancipate a target rather than targeting those agencies who are persecuting their target um, are also showing their own stripes. Um, so I think 
you know, all will be as it will be on that front. And it's a learning experience for all of us, but we are going to keep growing this movement and we're not going to stop. And I am particularly proud of that. Elizabeth, we were supposed to interview you. We never got around to it. You must, I'm sure you're absolutely exhausted. But in this last, say, 15 or 20 minutes, I would really just like you to speak from the heart. What makes you sacrifice to the level that you are and have to do what you do? Uh, you've been breaking incredible incredible stories at disobedient media which as as i believe william craddock actually said in a tweet you guys have been setting narratives and you have there are now people across the media sphere following up and investigating stories that you picked up on first um but more broadly in this movement to free julian your sacrifice is incredible in terms of the hours that you're putting in and the effort that you're putting in so what drives you what drives you, what keeps you here, and what keeps you committed? Well, I think um, as we've discussed throughout this entire vigil, um, all of us who are participating to support Julian are driven by empathy and integrity and, and knowing that uh, what we're fighting for is morally right. And, and we've observed over, uh, throughout all the different guests, um, you know, there's been this sense that the, the the establishment and the powers that be lack that moral integrity, that moral compass, and that is a self-perpetuating system that encourages that. But I feel that in all of those ways, uh, what WikiLeaks does and the people supporting WikiLeaks are so much the inverse of that self-perpetuating sort of evil system that is, is armed against WikiLeaks and against Julian Assange. So uh, what motivates me is is not only um, compassion as a human being for anyone that is suffering, but also uh, as an independent journalist, I value what WikiLeaks uh, publishes so highly. And I, I really am saddened to see the public not understand the value of these primary source documents, the value of this information that and, and WikiLeaks' incredible record of integrity and accurate reporting and accurate publications. You know, they've never, ever published false documents, despite obvious attempts uh, that, that we know about uh, from, from various uh, groups and private security firms to, to, to strategize how they could submit false documents to WikiLeaks. So the fact that they've never, ever uh, published anything that was that was a false document is incredible and it makes every single one of the millions of documents that they've published so valuable to independent media to anyone who is doing real investigative journalism and as I mentioned with Vivian there are so many different subjects that we've been able to research I know that William mentioned it briefly the human trafficking subjects have been bolstered by Wik WikiLeaks documents WikiLeaks dossiers entire publications uh, for example, the Dutro dossier, uh, you know, completely um, reverse the establishment narratives on so many varied and diverse important stories. And so for me, uh, I am somebody who has, you know, and I think a lot of us who support WikiLeaks and Julian Assange feel the same way. You know, we've had personal experiences that uh, motivate us to not stand for allowing lies to continue. We refuse to simply go along with comfortable lies in order to, to, to maintain um, a veneer of, of comfort. It, it, you know, whether it makes uh, a person uncomfortable to sit here for a long time or whether it's uncomfortable um, having a fight with somebody on Twitter about what you think is true or whether it's uncomfortable to face, you know, your local community or family members who, who, do not understand what you're talking about. There is always discomfort in truth telling, and I, I have always been felt that it is worth it to face that discomfort as opposed to turn away from it, and that the truth is more valuable because, of, or partly because of the the huge sacrifices that are made by people like Julian Assange to bring us that truth. And I know that a lot of panelists mentioned that that you know. You know, yes, they're giving up an hour to come see us and, and speak with us. I'm giving up, you know, 10 hours or so uh, today to, to speak with these amazing panelists. But that is absolutely not even a drop in the bucket compared to what Julian Assange has done for all of us and what his family members have had to go through and the, the impact that the persecution of Julian Assange has had on so many people uh, around him and the persecution of WikiLeaks staff as well. So... I think that this is absolutely uh, 
uh, something that should not be underestimated by anyone. And that and that's the long winded answer, answer to your question on that. That is a phenomenal point. You're absolutely correct that the sacrifices that we make are they're a drop, not only a drop in the bucket compared to Julian, but they're a drop in the bucket compared to our ability to make change and to have an impact. And absolutely, I completely agree with you that it is all worth it. Um, let's keep soldiering forward. That's all I've really got to say. Let's keep working together. Let's keep building a movement. Let's keep the single focus because I think that this model is, is one that can be very successful. And I think that there's many people that have been frustrated and felt like, well, the problems are so big, not just what the problems are so big, what we can, can we do, but even when we've had, when we have achieved mass movements and critical mass, we still haven't won. I'm thinking back now to my conversation with Cynthia McKinney, where we talked about this historical context where critical mass had been achieved, but ultimately the state had won and been able to suppress the movements. If we have the single demand I, and we keep pushing for it and we keep bringing in as many people as we can that are like-minded and that are also willing to push for this, I think absolutely it's an achievable goal. And I'm sure that scares the shit out of the persecutors, but quite frankly, that's karmic. Um, they, this is the result of the seeds that they have sown. So Elizabeth, what can I say to you? You're a beautiful person and I am extremely privileged to work with you and to have been a, a part of this with you. Let's move forward and look forward to the next month. I want to say many thank yous. I want to say thank you to Joe Booth, who's the technical director of the Internet Party of New Zealand, who has um, gone above and beyond to support the us in the back end in terms of systems and networks. I'd like to say a huge thank you to Fly and to Evan Kim, who also have assisted greatly with the tech. Um, you guys have been amazing. You are you are a huge part of creating what's been done. I'd like to say thank you to the dozens of people who have been coordinating an internet party uh, to manage all of the social media accounts and to get the word out, even to break the sense, help to break the censorship and to make people aware of what is going on. Thank you all. You are incredible, incredible people. Elizabeth and I have the privilege of sitting here and being the faces of this, but you guys are the backbone. Thank you so much. You are absolutely amazing. I'd like to say thank you to the untold thousands of people who have watched this stream and to the thousands of people who will watch it again in the coming weeks and months as we re-release the um, different segments of the guest interviews. I would like to say a massive thank you to WikiLeaks and to WikiLeaks legal team who have been also tirelessly tweeting and promoting this stream. It is an incredible honour to us that you have recognised the spirit of our work and that you, um, that you have helped us to reach as large an audience as possible. Um, who I would like to thank all of the guests, the, many of whom came on at very short notice and who put their faith in us and who shared their experience with us and spoke from the heart so eloquently. I, as I said, I've learned so much from this weekend and I'm sure that so many people have. It has been a phenomenal, phenomenal experience. Have I forgotten anyone, Elizabeth? Not that I, I, I'm probably less in a, in a state to be able to remember everyone involved with this effort, but uh, than you are at the moment. But no, I, I think that that just about sums it up. And the absolute, the, the biggest thanks definitely have to go to WikiLeaks and, and to Julian for what he's doing. And we just hope that this has some impact on that situation. Absolutely. Okay, guys, we will leave it there. That's a phenomenal first effort for Hash Unity for Jay. Um, we look forward to next month. Thank you again all for being here. And huge love to you from us. So I'm going to blow you a kiss and we're going to cut the stream. Good night or good day, everyone, depending on where you are. And thank you again. Thank you, everyone. You're amazing. <laughs>